edition of the UK Law Weekly podcast with me, your host, Marcus Cleaver. This week we're going to be looking at the case of First Group, PLC and Pauly. The citation for this case is 2017 UKSC 4. Now, in all of the excitement surrounding the Article 50 case recently, this case involving First Group and Pauly has not received as much media attention as it perhaps truly deserves. The facts of the case are fairly simple and perhaps more common than we would like to admit in our society. Pauly is a wheelchair user who in 2012 attempted to board a bus operated by First Group. The bus did have a designated area for wheelchair users and a notice stating, quote, please give up this space for a wheelchair user. But there was a woman in this space with a pushchair who refused to move after being asked to do so by the driver. The relevant law in this scenario is section 29 of the Equality Act 2010 under which First Group is classified as a public service provider and is required to make reasonable adjustments in order to avoid substantial disadvantages to disabled people. When the case was first brought to court, the recorder held that First Group operated a policy of first come first served that meant in circumstances like those of Pauly, disabled passengers were placed at a significant disadvantage. The result was that the sign would have to be changed so as to positively require the relevant space to be vacated if a wheelchair user needed it. Furthermore, If a non-disabled passenger refused to comply, they must be forced to leave the bus. First group appealed to the Court of Appeal and were successful in overturning this result, as it would be unreasonable to make the company adopt such a stringent policy. The Supreme Court was given the final word and had to choose between these two starkly different options. Unfortunately, they very much fudged the decision, and this can be seen throughout the judgment and in the outcome of the case. Pauly's appeal was successful, but only to a limited extent. On the one hand, the hard and fast rule that had been suggested by the recorder was completely unworkable and would be more likely to lead to confrontation between passengers. As private individuals, passengers are not subject to the statutory requirements of the Equality Act 2010. However, on the other hand, the Supreme Court did feel that First Group should be doing more than it currently does to assist people like Mr. Pauly. In practice, this means putting pressure on non-wheelchair users by getting the bus driver to phrase the request as a requirement or even refusing to drive the bus until the person complies. Perhaps the most telling thing about this case, however, is that in the final result, Pauly did not get any damages because a majority of the justices held that even with this extra pressure, it is by no means clear whether the non-disabled passenger would actually have even moved. Overall, I think the thing that annoys me about this case is that it is not the sort of thing that should be litigated on. In the first instance, it is common decency to allow a person using a wheelchair to sit in the place designated for those passengers. Drivers should also not be so coy in using their position to make this happen. However, I think my issue with this case goes much deeper and looks to examine the value of equality legislation in general. It's certainly true that equality is a venerable goal, but we ought to question whether coercive legislation and forcing people to be equal is the best way to get there. If this is the road that we decide to go down, then too often we end up attempting to police people's thoughts or over-regulating everyday encounters, as is the case here with Pauly. Of course, such legislation does have a place for larger moral issues such as gay rights and even practical concerns such as ensuring that all buses are equipped to deal with disabled passengers, but when we use the law to try and govern attitudes, It is no surprise when we end up with half-baked court judgments like the one we have seen today in Pauly. Well, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the UK Law Weekly podcast. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a rating and a review on iTunes. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Bye!